Practicing guitar can be one of the most monotonous, confusing things as a beginner. I mean, if you're a self-taught musician like myself, you have nowhere to start, no one to tell you what to do. When you're teaching yourself guitar, it's hard to form a good practice routine because we want to know how to practice correctly. So that's why I bring to you today not one, but a whole plethora of Guitar Legends practice routines. I'm lucky enough to have Blood, who has been graced by the presence of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, 85, the Miller Beer uh, Showcase at the Chelsea Pier, I think it was. And so they said, would you introduce Stevie Ray Vaughan? I went, what? You know, I walked into the um, trailers that they had for the talent, the hat, the boots, and there was Stevie Ray. He goes, hey, Joe, how you doing, you know? And it was Stevie Ray, man. I said, whoa, can I ask what you're doing? He goes, Bacon soda and super good. Show me his fingers, they were shred. His right hand, that was shred. The man was playing so much, he had burned a hole through his finger, patching it up with baking soda and super glue. It's through little anecdotes like this that I've gathered to create this hypothetical practice routine for Stevie. Stevie's obviously a blues cat. What I always associate with the blues is the minor pentatonic scale. And how do you think Stevie Ray Vaughan mastered the minor pentatonic scale? Practicing it over and over again, obviously. First position here. I mean, I know you're classic, but I've never sat down and fleshed out all the different positions. I mean, it's not that hard. Feeling very confident that I'd be able to breeze right through this process, I continued forward. No! Oh, come on. I just have so much more fun when I'm learning a song rather than learning scales. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, I gotta keep my head here. I try to play that routine five times in a row perfectly. If I mess up, I start back at take number one. <laughs> it's kind of insanity. <laughs> Another thing about Stevie is his ridiculous vibrato. Luckily, there's a little snippet out there of his bass player Tommy Shannon, who was curious about Stevie's vibrato technique and asked him, how do you shake the strings so well? To which Stevie responded, strike a vibrato, just slowly move up, fret by fret, while continuously shaking the strings. I'll check back in with you after my fingers are in severe pain. start on the thick low E string. Once I'd reached the top of the neck with that string, it was on to the A string, and then the D, G, B, and E, and gradually shake my way up to the top. These lower strings are like lifting 20 pound dumbbells, you know, like super heavy. And then when I get to the higher strings, like the G string, it's like a nice five pound weight. Ah. Ow. Right here, dude, it's really, it's not a good feeling. But what I noticed is I was building strength in my left hand. My vibrato wasn't only getting stronger, it was getting easier to bend the lighter gauge strings. All right, this is my vibrato after the whole routine. Dude, I just can't do this anymore. Oh my gosh. Nah, I don't recommend this one at home. I wanted to nail Stevie's practice routine as close as I could. So for my next chapter of practice, I'm gonna pick the brain of Stevie Ray Vaughan through this one lesson video. All right, so right off the bat, Stevie breaks into Hideaway by Freddie King. Okay, I don't think he's sliding. I think it's a... 
Freddie King, BB King, Albert King. Through these blues cats, Stevie came up with the saying that you gotta play like you're breaking out of jail. I was getting a glimpse into the mind of Stevie Ray Vaughan. He's got that typical shuffle down to a T, man. What helps with that is really getting those open strings in there. So you got like a typical E chord shape here. Stevie's just constantly hitting that open low E string. Sometimes going up one fret. Starts like that. Sounds so much cooler this way. You could just hear the amount of hours he poured into his practice routine to get this sound, man. So instead of doing your little cowboy thing here, Stevie's going on crack a little bit. He's playing the blues with like a paradiddle rhythm in his right hand. Between every chord change, he's going a little, little rake, open rake there. Stevie was a skilled palm muter, uh, or really a finger muter. Let me show you. Say we're vamping on a E7 chord. That would get pretty overwhelming if I just sat here with the open low E string just ringing out entirely. But what Stevie does is he has his thumb over the neck. During some moments, he silences that noisy low E string. I just can't do it. My fingers will never be as strong as Stevie. Mm. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Two words. Bacon soda is super good. But no, not like that. Like this on your fingers. Yeehaw. Tits. Yeehaw. Tits. Yeehaw. Now, if you think Stevie Ray Vaughan is the only Steve on my list of intense practice routines, you'd be dead wrong. Next, we have Steve Vai. He's most known for his work with Polyphia, and that's pretty much it for Steve Vai. But he's also known for his 30-hour practice routine, 10 hours a day for three days. Now, this would slowly begin my descent into guitar insanity. Ugh, it's just nasty, dude. I never want to play this again. Starts on the... Remember earlier how I said I don't like playing scales? Well, this 30 hour routine is literally just that. I'm really hating my life right about now. And then we go to the second fret. Uh... So boom, off to the races, running through scales like a maniac. Okay. Three, four, two, three, four. I'm hoping that my brain picks up on these patterns because right now it just feels like nonsense. It was Joe Satriani who said, your brain can only handle about an hour of information at a time. After that, it says, enough. After about an hour, I called it for the night. I woke up the next day dreading what was to come. Like what? As soon as you, as stu, as soon as soon as you stop. Here we go. That's it. That's that's what took me 20 minutes to learn. People like riffs. People like music. 
people don't like playing scales. Okay, moving on. But you have to keep in mind the times. It's 2004. People want to play fast. Heck, even if I was into this routine, I don't think I would have done 30 hours either. Like Joe Satriani said, your brain can only handle so much information at one time. Ooh, Mr. Steve I, what was that? I want to learn that. I did learn this cool little jam. I was lucky enough to have an audio sample of this, this melody, but I've got an audio book. Imagine people with the paperback. Man, maybe if I practiced my Steve I scales, I would have known how to play this already. Coincidentally enough, this is the part that took me the least amount of time to learn. Uh, for a player like Steve I, it makes sense that his practice routine would be mostly scales, but imagine you're a single guitar player in your room practicing scales over and over again. It's the most unmotivating thing I think I've ever witnessed. I mean, how are you supposed to take this to a blues jam? <laughs> if you want to keep playing guitar, do not purchase this book. Yo, who's the new guy? Just some kid who completed Steve Vai's 10-hour guitar routine. Let's help him out, I guess. Steve Vai taught me this one. Wait a second, where did everyone go? But sometimes we just can't relate to rock icons. That's why I wanted to give you a glimpse into a self-taught musician's daily practice routine. Yeah! Okay, I'm just gonna start recording. But for the longest time, my practice routine was do school, get home from school, and jam to blues backing tracks. And it was a harsh reality to find out I wasn't improving at all by doing this every day. It snapped in my head that being uncomfortable is a good thing. But yeah, overall, it boils down to three subjects. Stepping outside of your comfort zone, going the extra mile, find a riff that tickles your eardrum, and then two is enjoyment. Sometimes you just gotta play what you're feeling and hear. And then number three is consistency. Make sure to fit in at least an hour of playing a day. In my eyes, any amount of time playing is time spent getting better. It's almost like a Lego set. You start from nothing, but then like you start to see this beautiful structure form right before your eyes and I have a dear friend who was always so curious about my ability to solo and create melodies on the spot sometimes he'll ask have you practiced scales are you using music theory to come up with this improvisation it took me hopping on YouTube every day sifting out new players and new riffs to build this massive repertoire the improvisation of it all comes from listening to a lot of music but after a certain amount of time of practicing every day, that improvisational skill just appeared one day. To put the nail in the coffin here, I have to stress playing live. Practicing off of YouTube every day will form this echo chamber. echo chamber. Once you play out, you'll get a broader scale of how things work. You know, concerts included. Go catch a show every now and then. But over any of that, I think you should just enjoy yourself. If you're not digging something, then don't do it.